Hello, it's Matt O'Leary and Chicago post-rock and instrumental metal band Russian Circles are back with their seventh album. This one's called Blood Year. To be just real honest here, I never really dove into Russian Circles and I do feel slightly ashamed. But they've been there, you know, people love them, they've got the clout. Unfortunately, I've just never really happened to give them the time. I mean, I've probably heard all the albums. I uh, just had them on in the background of cooking dinner or something, but I wasn't truly locked in. I've just known they're a badass band, and I figured at some point I'd get around to it and really see what I've been missing. Blood Year is coming after 2016's Guidance, and I at least know that that album was a little more atmospheric than some of their earlier stuff, and that seems to be the way that their discography has leaned over time. Like I said, I have heard the album, so their first one, their debut, Enter, I know was more influenced by math rock and uh, kind of Midwest emo stuff, but I still didn't have too much of an expectation for Blood Year, just because I don't know the music that well. Blood Year is the first album I've really sunk in my teeth into and drawn blood and Holy wow. Those drums are like a just a seismic boom. On tracks like Our Luck or Sinaya, it really doesn't seem like they're using a click, like no metronome at all, because the drums are just slightly, just ever so slightly behind the beat in the best way possible. It's like the pulleys and, and thick ropes on a huge ship are, are being tugged and you get that slow, ominous, powerful creaking sound. It's like this giant robot rising up from beneath the city and its lethargic movement is part of what makes it so intimidating and monstrous. I really do love the tone of Dave Turncance's drums. I mean, the production there is pristine. The album opens with Hunter Moon, which is this really nice meditative guitar piece, very somber, uh, and it really does set that, that apocalyptic, but at the same time triumphant mood. And that's something I love about this album. It doesn't just feel like constant doom and gloom, you know, it's there's a redemptive quality to the riffs. That black metal tremolo picking about halfway through our luck breaks like a cloudburst back into this hailstorm of chugs. And the track Milano continues that with a pretty straightforward progression. And I will say that a lot of songs on here feel very spontaneous, and maybe as a result of that spontaneity, um, they're also fairly simple. But the plus side of that is that it, it feels like live sound. It doesn't uh, just feel like studio wizardry, you know, and it, it feels like the chemistry of a band that is still really excited to play together. That screeching end to Milano just fades in perfectly to the, the bleak and stark desert vibes of Cahokia. There are these huge, densely textured moments on Blood Year, but also these very stripped back parts that make those crowded sections just stand out more. I think it'd be really easy for an album like this to grow tiresome just because you know, once you've experienced the gargantuan heaviness once, it's like returning to the Eiffel Tower, you know? You've been there. But it's actually not the end, it's the middle of the album that drags a little bit for me, like Milano and then parts of Cahokia. And it's the end that's the highlight for me with the heart-wrenching beauty of Ghost on High or Sinaya, which I mentioned before, or just the relentless quartered with this tortured wailing screech kind of low in the mix behind it. Quartered is a barn burner. Again, pretty meat and potatoes, but pummeling nonetheless. And there's not a lot more to say about this one. It fits in really nicely next to Pelican's album from this year. As far as post-rock goes, I'm definitely more into the jazzier stuff than I and the, the metal and the atmospheric side, so I'm not totally blown away by this one, but I am really enjoying it, and it's a really nice palate cleanser when you're listening to a ton of noodly stuff or indie rock. So it's a 7 out of 10 for me, uh, and, and let me know how I should work my way through this band's discography. You know, what should I start with? Should I just go straight through chronologically, or is there an album that you think stands apart? As always, thank you so much for watching.